TV Recapped here. Today I'm going to explain a 2021 comedy drama series called Sex Lives of College Girls. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care! The series follows the story of Kimberly, Layton, Bella, and Whitney. The four girls become roommates when they enter Essex College. The first two episodes show how the girls adjust to their new college life and roommates. Episode 1 begins with Kimberly, Layton, Bella, and Whitney moving into college. Accompanied by their excited and worried parents, the girls make their way to their dorm room. Bella and Kimberly are the first to meet, and they happily greet each other. The two girls then mention being roommates with Whitney Chase, the daughter of a famous senator. At that moment, Whitney and Senator Chase arrive at the room. After introducing herself, Senator Chase immediately sets ground rules for the young ladies. Layton arrives last and gets surprised when Kimberly hugs and greets her. It turns out that she was expecting her high school best friends, Esme and Francesca, to be her roommates. Confused, Layton leaves the room and meets up with her best friends to ask them about what happened. After concluding that it's a glitch in the school system, she vows to sort things out the next day. Sometime later, the girls attend a meeting with their FAF or faculty advisor and friend. During the meeting, their FAF asks the students to share their fears. Several people oblige, including Kimberly, who shares that she's nervous about her work-study interview set the next day. Layton, on the other hand, believes that the exercise is pointless. Then, the girls begin bonding at the dining hall and share their reasons for going to Essex. Bella shares that she's here because she wants to join the school's comedy group called Catolan. Kimberly then says that she came because it's a prestigious school. The girls then question Kimberly about her relationship with her boyfriend Max. Sometime later, Whitney shows her skills during soccer practice. After practice, a girl named Willow praises Whitney in the locker room. To Whitney's dismay, she overhears Jenna and her friend talking smack about her. They believe that the only reason Whitney is on the team is because she's the daughter of a senator. Whitney then goes to Coach Dalton's office after that. Surprisingly, the reason for her visit isn't about the incident in the locker room. It turns out that Whitney and Coach Dalton are in a relationship. A happy Whitney sits on Dalton's lap and gives him a passionate kiss. Meanwhile, Kimberly successfully lands her work-study job at the campus cafe and immediately gets along with her boss. He introduces Kimberly to her co-workers, Cannon and Leela. Unlike her boss, her co-workers don't seem that excited working with Kimberly. On Layton's side of things, she is in the process of sorting out her roommate problem. Layton believes it's a glitch in the school system, but she's in for a rude awakening. It turns out that on her best friend's applications, they specified that they don't want to be roommates with Layton. While all that happens, Bella attends the orientation for Katolin. Along with other interested applicants, Bella learns what to expect from the road ahead. The entire event has left Bella in an excited state, especially after seeing a video of Katolin's successful alumnus. In her desire to get closer to her co-workers, Kimberly talks with Cannon on one of their shifts. Realizing how Kimberly is trying hard, Cannon tells her a fake story about himself. He also tells her about Leela having a much harder time in life than him. The naive Kimberly fails to notice all the lies and believes everything Cannon says. Meanwhile, an angry Layton confronts Esme and Francesca about their roommate arrangements. To her surprise, Layton learns that her so-called best friends don't view their friendship the same way she does. Feeling betrayed, Layton gives them the finger and storms off. That night, the depressed Layton is lying in bed when Kimberly comes into her room and offers her a burrito. Kimberly then tries asking her to join the game of Uno that they are playing in the next room, but Layton refuses her. Unwilling to pester her roommate any further, Kimberly leaves Layton alone. While playing, a student named Nico arrives at the girl's dorm. Bella, Kimberly, and Whitney are speechless after seeing the hunk. Nico then says that he's looking for Layton. Bella comments about Layton being lucky, but Nico immediately reveals that they're siblings. Layton and Nico go outside to talk. Nico then comforts his sister after learning about what happened with Esme and Francesca. Nico also discovers that Layton is treating her roommates like trash. Since they seem like good people to him, Nico advises his sister to apologize and try befriending them. During her next shift at work, tryhard Kimberly talks to Leela about her inspiring story. Kimberly then learns that Cannon is only messing with her and gets upset. Cannon and Leela continue the mess with Kimberly, but she catches up quicker this time around and scolds them. At her next soccer practice, Whitney notices Jenna acting aggressively towards her. The tension between the two continues to build up as the game progresses. Eventually, they start shoving each other, but Coach Dalton stops them. After practice, Whitney visits Dalton's office and tells him not to interfere because she can handle herself. Meanwhile, Bella encounters Eric, one of the editors for Catullin. 
She eagerly shares her ideas, but an uninterested Eric stops her. He then discourages her from pursuing the idea of joining the group. Eric reveals that the slots for female writers that year are already taken. While disheartened by the revelation, Bella doesn't give up yet. At their dorm later, Layton gathers the girls and gives them apology gifts. The girls open the packages and are all surprised to find brand new iPads in them. Layton then says she's hoping that they can all start fresh, and the girls accept her apology. A few moments later, a guy named Max arrives. A surprised Kimberly quickly runs up and hugs him. She introduces Max to the girls and reveals he's her boyfriend. It turns out that Max decided to surprise Kimberly and is hoping to stay with her during the weekend. Later at the dining hall, Bella talks about Katola's party for applicants. She tells them what Eric said earlier and reveals how she's now unsure about attending. While Kimberly thinks Bella should report the group, Layden and Whitney suggest it's better if Bella plays it cool. That night, Whitney finds flowers and chocolates in front of their dorm room from Dalton. Meanwhile, Bella attends the party and tries talking to another editor. The editor points her to a group of people that can help her get what she wants. When Bella returns to their dorm after the party, she tells Leighton about what happened. It turns out that her idea of playing it cool was to hand service the group she found earlier at the party. Leighton is in disbelief of what happened, but Bella seems excited and proud of it. Elsewhere, Dalton and Whitney spend some intimate time together. Kimberly and Max spend time with each other too. They take a walk and talk about each other's experiences in their respective colleges so far. When they return to the dorm later, the two decide to sleep together for the first time. In the morning, an excited Kimberly tells Max about her plans for the day. Out of nowhere, Max suggests that they break up, leaving Kimberly stunned and upset. The rest of the girls stand at their doorways and watch in disgust. Kimberly asks if sleeping with her is the only reason for his visit this weekend. After failing to get a straight answer, Kimberly angrily leaves for work. Disgusted with Max and what he did to Kimberly, the rest of the girls kick him out of their dorm. Sometime later, Bella nervously checks the Katolan announcement board. It turns out that her move at the party worked and she made it to the team. She excitedly takes a selfie in front of the announcement. Meanwhile, Whitney encounters Dalton while she's jogging. She approaches and greets him, but Dalton has a nervous look on his face. After a brief chat, they get interrupted by a woman. Whitney then learns that she's Michelle, Dalton's wife. Dalton introduces them and Michelle seems excited to meet Whitney. Though shocked and hurt by the revelation, Whitney tries to keep herself together and remain civil. She excuses herself and after getting a bit of distance, she lets her tears go. At the campus cafe, Cannon is sweeping when a guy passes by and drops trash in front of him. Kimberly notices this and calls the guy out for what he did. Humiliated, the guy apologizes and picks up the trash. Cannon and Lila's impression of Kimberly immediately improves. Elsewhere, Layden and Bella run into Nico and his friend Corey. After a brief chat, Bella convinces Corey to show his abs. Nico then invites the two girls to a party that night. Later at the dorm, Bella tells Whitney and Kimberly about the party invite. Sad because of their recent relationship troubles, Whitney and Kimberly say they'd rather stay in for the night. Unwilling to let her roommates miss the opportunity, Bella rouses the two into changing their minds. The girls then prepare for the party that night. When they arrive at the party, Layton claims she forgot her phone and tells her roommate she'll catch up. Excited for their first college party, the rest of the girls quickly get inside. They get their drinks and prepare to mingle. Kimberly then gets a text from Max. He's checking in and asking about her Netflix account. While reading Max's text, a guy falls on Kimberly, making her spill her drink all over her clothes. Frustrated, she decides to leave the party but meets Nico on the way out. He offers her some dry clothes and convinces her to stay. Meanwhile, Bella approaches two Katolan girl members but quickly finds out that they are hostile towards her. It turns out that they know about Bella's hand service move earlier. One of the girls then says that some of those guys have girlfriends. Saddened by what she learned, Bella finds Kimberly and asks to leave the party. Whitney spots Cannon at the party and approaches him. She doesn't waste time and tells him that she wants to see his room. Realizing what Whitney wants, Cannon quickly agrees. While all that happens, Layton is alone at a casino bar. She receives a text from Kimberly asking if she's okay. She ignores the text and opens a dating app full of women and scrolls through. Layton finds a female match and they meet up shortly after. The first episode ends when Layton gets intimate with her recently found date. Episode 2 begins at the dorm with Kimberly, Bella, and Whitney talking about her recent one night stand. Layton then arrives and Kimberly immediately calls her out for ghosting them. After reaffirming their friendship boundaries, Layton goes to her room. Sometime later, Kimberly and Bella are on their way to their first day of classes. 
After separating, Kimberly gets another text from Max about revealing their breakup to their friends. She then runs into Nico and they have a conversation about last night's party in French class. Layton, who's also on her way to class, gets a message from her hookup partner the other night. She doesn't reply and even blocks the woman. Layton then receives a call from her father and they talk about how things are for her in Essex. She ends the call by snarkily telling her father that she's already pregnant and he doesn't find it funny at all. At soccer practice, a frustrated Whitney ignores Coach Dalton's orders and her teammates. After running the ball down the field, she kicks the ball right into Dalton's face instead of shooting a goal. She then storms into Dalton's office after practice and confronts him. Dalton explains that he was planning to tell Whitney that he was married. The angry Whitney doesn't believe a word that Dalton is saying. Unwilling to listen to his explanations, Whitney leaves and tells Dalton they're over. Kimberly confidently attends her French class but soon learns that her classmates are more advanced than her. The French teacher notices this too, so she talks to Kimberly after class and suggests she drop out. Kimberly realizes that she may not be as good as French as she thinks. At the second round of cuts for the Catolan, Bella tries making amends with some of the girls she wronged. She talks with Evangeline and asks if she received her apology email. Evangeline says her reply must have gotten stuck and that she'll resend it right away. After Evangeline says that she sent her response, an excited Bella reads it right away. The message is nothing but an insult and Bella tries her best to play it cool. Later that night, Kimberly learns that she's the only one in their dorm that is struggling with their first day of classes. The next day, Layton gets promoted to a more advanced class. She makes her teacher announce it in front of her classmates while greatly praising her in the process. All of this to make her ex-best friend jealous of her newfound college life. While working out with Willow, Whitney learns about Jenna's party. She also discovers that Jenna doesn't want her to attend. Willow then tells her that she'll try working things out with her that night. Meanwhile, Bella gets wind of a naked party going down that night while talking with Jocelyn at the dining hall. Excited, she lets her body be contoured with makeup later that day. Her roommates also learn about the party, but they aren't interested. Later that night, Whitney waits for Willow's updates about Jenna's party. While that happens, Lane is in another late night hookup when her date starts asking personal questions. Lane gets put off by her personal questions and decides to leave her. Realizing she's wasting her Friday night, Kimberly decides to join Bella and Jocelyn at the naked party. At Jenna's house, Whitney attends the party despite Willow's advice. She brings a gift to Jenna's room but walks in while Jenna and her boyfriend break up. Meanwhile, Bella, Kimberly, and Jocelyn arrive at the naked party. Kimberly gets cold feet but overcomes them with the help of Bella. The two enter the party with high hopes. Layton runs into Nico while walking alone. She learns that Nico told his friends about what happened between her and her high school best friends. Embarrassed, Layton grabs her drinks and leaves planning to get drunk for the night. Back at the naked party, Bella and Kimberly struggle to fit in. In an attempt to save their night, the two get drunk and it works. Meanwhile, at Jenna's house, Whitney comforts Jenna after a breakup. After cheering her up with compliments, the two become friends for now. Bella runs into Evangeline at the party and apologizes to her. Evangeline accepts her apology and after revealing that she has rooted for her application from the start, the two make up. While that happens, Whitney visits Dalton in his office. After leaving the party, a drunk Kimberly shows up at Nico's frat house and asks him to be her French tutor. Amazed, Nico accepts Kimberly's request. Meanwhile, a drunk and frustrated Layton lashes out at the school's founder statue. The second episode ends with Layton getting chased by campus security. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.